how to make an intro inside DaVinci Resolve like this one. Add the Fusion composition on your timeline, right click and open Infusion page. In here you want to add the background which is right here and then connect it to your media out. Next you can highlight your background, open inspector in the top right and you can change the color of the background of your liking. You can pick something from here, you can change the color, press ok. But in my case I'm gonna leave my background transparent, so I'm reducing the alpha values to zero. Next step is to add our logo, so we want to go to our media pool which is on the top left, still in the fusion tab and we want to look up for our logo. In this case I'm going to use the Finch Resolve logo, but you can use any kind of logo you want, connect it between your background and media out, that will automatically create you a merge node in between. By pressing F2 on the keyboard you can rename your node, I'm typing logo. Now when I highlight my logo on my viewer I can see that I'm not allowed to do anything with this logo. So in order to make some adjustments on that logo we need to highlight that logo node and go on this shortcut icon and add the transform node from here. Now we are allowed to change the position, the size and many more stuff around that logo. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of the corners right here and increase the size of that logo of my liking. I'm gonna keep it all about size like this and also I'm gonna grab one of the arrows inside and I'm going to move it towards the right side of the screen leaving it on about right here. Next step I'm going in the timeline and I'm placing my playhead around frame number 20 and I'm creating a keyframe from center xy and also on the angle. And then I'm going to frame number 0 in the very beginning, I'm zooming out, out of my viewer and I'm holding that icon and I'm leaving it outside of vision around right here. Next I'm increasing the values of angle to around 250 so that it can make our logo spin towards the second keyframe which is on the right side of the viewer screen. I'm previewing so you can have a better understanding on which two keyframes we did right now. Next up we're opening the spline tab, we're enabling the transform one, I'm pressing this icon right here so we can see all the keyframes, then right here, that way all of our keyframes are selected and then pressing S on the keyboard so we can smooth out these keyframes. I'm previewing it again, you can see a tiny bit of difference, it's a little bit smoother, it's not so jarring. Also, you can go to settings right here in the inspector, enable motion blur and increase the quality and the shutter angle by a tiny bit. I'm closing out, previewing it again, it looks good, so I'm moving on with the next step. So for the next step, I need to place my timeline playhead on the frame of which this icon is already on the screen steady. In my case, this is frame number 20. So starting from frame number 20, I want to add some camera shake to make this reveal of the icon a little bit more effective. So I'm highlighting this merge one node. I'm pressing control spacebar to open our toolbox with effects. And in the search bar, I'm typing camera shake. Once I found it, I can click on add and it will be added to our merge node. And when I preview it, you can see there's a little problem. It is actually shaking all the way from the beginning until the end of the video. So we want to make our settings like that, that it's only shaking when it appears. So I'm gonna decrease the values of that camera shake, go onto the frame which I want to start my camera shake, which is on frame around 2021. 20, then I'm gonna go in the inspector and I'm gonna activate all of the keyframes, the position, rotation and strength. Then I'm gonna move forward in the timeline, just about one or two frames forward. And I'm gonna increase the values just by a tiny bit on all of the settings that you have just saw me reducing by now. These settings values are based on your liking, so don't try to copy everything I do. Just use your intuition on what settings should be better for your camera shake. I'm adjusting my values and I'm going further in my timeline. This is the moment until when I want my camera shake to be happening. So I'm creating my third keyframe with the same values. So between my second and third keyframe, this effect is gonna happen. And now I'm creating my fourth keyframe with values of zero again. This is where the effect is gonna end. I'm also adding some motion blur. This is what we're having so far. A nice spinning logo with some camera shake elements at the end. And now we're halfway done. Moving on with the next step, I'm highlighting the logo. I'm adding another transform icon. I'm highlighting this transform two node that we just have created. And I'm going on the timeline on the place where our shake effect is ending. 
in my case is on frames around 30 so i'm placing my timeline frame head right there and i'm going in the inspector creating a keyframe next to center xy then i'm going around 10 frames forward and then i'm moving my logo to towards the left side right here so far we're having two keyframes on this transform 2 node which are making our logo go to the left side i'm adding some motion blur on that as well and also you can highlight this transform 2 go to the spline tab and you can enable all of the transform 2 settings that you have so so i'm disabling everything else leaving only transform 2 selected highlighting all of the keyframe pressing s and now i'm smoothing out the keyframes and now we're ready to continue with our effects i'm highlighting this camera shake and i'm adding a text which is creating a merge to node then i'm selecting this text and i'm typing there the vinci resolve you can type in anything you want i'm adjusting the size the font and etc now we're highlighting this text and adding a rectangle everything that is inside that rectangle with the text is gonna be visible as you can see so now we're gonna animate the text reveals as the logo is going towards the left side. So now we're gonna create a few manual keyframes on that rectangle text. First I'm moving my rectangle towards the right side until I don't see my text anymore. Then I'm creating a keyframe next to center x y and then I'm moving my timeline playhead by pressing the right arrow of the keyboard one frame at a time. And each time my logo is moving towards the left side, I'm changing the position of center X on our rectangle, which is attached to our text, making sure that it's following our logo and it is revealing our text as the logo goes to the left. It's very hard to make just two keyframes and make them fit your logo. So you have to do all this manually. And good thing is that it's just around 10 frames. I actually managed to do this just by using five keyframes. So I'm gonna preview now so you can see what we're having so far. As I said, as the logo goes to the left, the rectangle is moving and it's revealing our text. Next up, we can highlight our logo. We can go to our backgrounds, add it, and you can pick any light color you like. I'm picking light yellow, and we're gonna use that background to add some shine over our logo. Also, I'm adding a rectangle over our second background, and anything in that rectangle is gonna be visible. I'm taking down the size of that rectangle to about size like this. Also, I'm going to decrease the size of angle, that way our background is having some angle and it looks a little bit better. Then I'm going to move it and leave it over our logo because we want to experiment something. I'm going to decrease the level values by a lot. This is basically the opacity of that background. I'm going to leave it to about 0.3. And also I'm going to add some soft edges because I don't want them to be that hard. So I'm increasing the size of soft edge to about this much. And now when we're having the right tones of light, we're ready to animate the whole thing. So this is our shine element and we're gonna leave it on the left side of our logo. So now we're gonna make our shine passing through our logo just for about four or five frames maximum. So we're adjusting it to make sure it's fitting all of our logo. Then we highlight merge three and we're creating another rectangle. And this rectangle is gonna make sure that our background light is going to be visible only in that rectangle. And we're gonna make that rectangle just about the size of our logo. We're gonna also corner radius increase. That way our shine is only visible inside the logo. And this is what we're having. A spinning logo with a camera shake which is revealing a text and a little bit of shine in the end. You can replace the logo with your own and put a text of your liking. And this is what you're having. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to check out this video right here. I'm pretty sure you're gonna like it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.